like you're in a boss fight right now. <laughs> yeah, it was uh it was interesting because after my Shiba died, mm. and I've said this a bunch of times, but after my yeah. Shiba died, yeah. I was looking at other breeds. Mm. And I was looking at Roddies and Pitbulls yeah. and even a Belgian Malinois is sick in the head as I would have been to get a Belgian Malinois. Yeah. So I was looking into the dogs, and then I saw that they had Akitas. Mm -hmm. And I always heard that Akitas were mad aggressive. So I just I sat there, and I kind of looked at it. I said, all right, whatever. But I said, why do these Akitas look different? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. And then I saw that there was an American and a Japanese Akita. Mm -hmm. Very and much. from there, I started doing my research, and I found out that the Japanese Akitas are more rare, and especially in the States. That's There's not a lot of them here. They're less aggressive uh, than the American Akitas, although they still have tendencies because they're a very primitive dog because they're part of the Spitz breed. Yeah. And, you know, just doing my research, I realized that I was spoiled my Shiba, man. She was amazing. <laughs> super quiet. Yeah. Super affectionate. Yeah. And just can chill on her own. Uh -huh. So you don't have to worry about have an entertainer every four seconds, like some dogs. Yeah. You know, there's golden retrievers. My, my cousin's looking into getting a golden retriever right now, and I told him, I said, I, I, I wouldn't get a golden retriever. I think they're beautiful dogs. I think they're good family dogs. They are. Good family they're dogs. They're good family dogs because, yeah. you know, if you got kids and shit like that, but when it comes down to it, I just think that they're always like, oh, everything's great. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, just, <laughs> I knew I wanted a dog that could just have a playful side, have a loving side, but also a side that just went, I right, game's over. Who's yeah. this fucking dude coming into the house? Yeah. Or who's this approaching us and type of type of mentality. So when I got the when I started doing research on the Akitas and I started looking up stuff and exactly what you said when you when you first got here, they require a strong owner. They do. They do. And see you do you did your, your research beforehand. See a lot of people don't and then they they get a dog and they say, I want an Akita. They go find a breeder to get the Akita. And now guess what? They realize they can't have the Akita because they don't have the, menta the mental fortitude to even upkeep the Akita. And then the dog winds up at a shelter. Exactly. And it's heartbreaking because then the dog didn't do anything wrong. It just did what it, was, what it was bred to do and how to react to things. And now these people have abandoned it. Yeah. And, and it, it, it breaks my heart when I see the dogs at the shelter because it breaks my heart, especially when, when you see them and they just look lost. Dude, and even like they're the commercial? waiting for their families. Commercial? Yeah. Nah, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I've told the story before, but during my cousin's bachelor party in New Orleans over the summer, I was postponing as long as humanly possible to yeah. see the movie Hachi. What's that? Hachi is the story of a Japanese Akita that uh -huh. was found in Japan. Mm -hmm. A professor found him at a train, st train station, uh -huh. you know, and basically what happened was his wife didn't really want a dog, but yeah. they couldn't find an owner for the dog. They couldn't find any any people that would take the dog in. Mm -hmm. And so what wound up happening was the guy keeps the dog. Mm. And every day when the guy goes to the train station to go to work, the dog would break out of the house and wait for him at the station all day. Oh, man. And then every time, every day the guy would come back from work because yeah. he worked at a, he, he'd leave from Tokyo and he'd go somewhere else. Yeah. Every time the guy would come back from work, the dog would be right at the top of the train station waiting for him. <laughs> so it was like a thing. People knew the dog is in that. So the guy goes to work one day and uh -huh. he dies at work. That's crazy. So now the dog's lost. The dog waited for him for another 10 years. Wow. Kept going back. They tried to give it to like different family members. The dog kept breaking out and waiting at the train station for the owner. So, oh my God, it gives me chills thinking about it. So 10 years, they, they would see the old dog coming up, waiting for the owner. And I'm just like sitting there and I'm watching the movie and my cousin and his boys jump in. They're like, Nick, you ready to go out tonight? I'm like, in a second. <laughs> I'm like, in a second. It's it's too much, the dog. You know, because now I'm away. I'm thinking of Kenji. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. Yeah. So, so you got to go sneak to the bathroom, shed a few tears. Oh, my back. God. I was like, I, I, I was beside myself. But I was yeah. waiting so long. I can't watch, like, a dog's, t a dog's life or whatever those m movies are. I can't watch emotional movies. I can't. Well, you I know can't. what? I like emotional movies. I don't mind. I, I don't mind getting into my bag, my yeah. feels and shit uh, like that. Sitting there by myself, watching a little rom-com, and I'm yeah. like, he does love her. Like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there just enjoying shit. But when, it, when, you start, when you start throwing animals in there, man, yeah. and you start, and the animals are getting hurt and shit like that, uh, oh, my God, dude. Well, everything... From what we're going to talk about today, it's going to come in one full circle. And you'll get to understand as to why I can't watch like emotional movies. It, it takes me down like a, a different path. Okay. Every, everybody has their own you know, story to tell. Almost like uh, Joe Dirt. You ever seen that movie? I've seen bits and pieces of Joe Dirt. Oh, I have. my God. It's a great movie. Great movie. I've, for the pieces I've seen. But what happens is 
they start off laughing at him. And then they start to feel sorry for him and then understand him. And then throughout the movie, I mean, it's a comedy. I mean, you're going to laugh regardless. Oh, yeah. But, um, that mullet's great. Yeah. Oh, amazing, right? <laughs> it's actually fake. It's, it, I, yeah, I think yeah. it was glued, glued on. on. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> but um, everybody enjoys the story. Everybody likes the story. Everybody can appreciate the story. But some gravitate towards the story. And that's what gets people to, to follow you on this journey that we call life. You know, you'll, you'll meet people, you'll, you'll, you'll see people come in, and I believe everybody has a whole time and place. Like, you have people come in, and they're, they're there for that moment, and then they leave. They serve their purpose. But, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have some fun today. I know. So, uh, listen, thank you for coming down, first and foremost. Oh, appreciate you having me. It was, it was amazing to meet you that time when we were doing uh, the video with Jamal at your studio, which oh, your studio God. is amazing. Thank you. Thank if, you. If y'all don't know... Uh, pinpoint Muay Thai. Yes, sir. Pinpoint M- M- MMA too. In MMA, you know, I was gonna say pinpoint MMA, but I see on the on the Instagram it's Muay Thai, so I try to keep yeah. the name authentic. So we we started off with just Muay Thai, and uh, my partner in the gym he actually brought the MMA aspect. So now we're actually starting to branch off and do MMA fights. Like I get Muay Thai promoters hit me up like, hey, you wanna put you guys on? You wanna you know do some Thai boxing? I'm like, hey, listen, right now you know we're we're doing some MMA now. And, thai yeah. boxing's wild. You gotta love it. Wild. You have to love it. There's no money in Thai boxing. There's none. There's nothing. The people who are on like the top, top, top level. So what? It, what would a top level of Thai boxing be? Huh? Well, yeah. What would? It, what would? What's the federation? What is it? Ah, uh, I mean, WBC now has Thai boxing. Okay. You know that that's something that carries over from boxing. They, uh, I believe, they just started. But you know, like the grand stage of them all would be to fight in Thailand and and to actually beat a Thai. Not a lot of people can say, yo, I, I beat a tie. Is that what it is? That's kind of like the trophy right there. American fighters going over to try to beat a tie? It's it's the trophy. It really? definitely is. I, I, to my, in my opinion, it, it means more than a belt because that's their art. Thai boxing came from Thailand. That's their art. So if you could beat someone from Thailand who lives, breathes, smells, you know, wakes up and, you know, does it on a daily basis, five hours a day, and you beat him, there you go. That's your, that's your title right there. And it started out with th- with Thai boxing at your gym, or it started out as MMA, which was the first. So Thai boxing was first. Okay, we, we started with Thai boxing, um, and then uh, we we started bringing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I tried it once before with the, another individual, but he was kind of like cuckoo. Hey. So it's like, do which I, I feel like some of the I feel like some of the MMA cats are they can be a little cuckoo <laughs> let me tell you something you gotta be a sick motherfucker to fight yeah well Flat you get hit in the head how many times right oh uh, yeah <laughs> you know but you know how many how many of those fighters make it you know how many you probably know maybe hundreds of fighters right now those hundreds of fighters probably one percent makes it and that is a ratio that it really needs to like you hear fighters say well you know we need to get paid more of course you need to be paid more you know, who could afford a training camp, a proper training camp? You know, who could really afford, you know, paying for the gloves, all right? And to me and you, that, you know, $60, you know, $6 per pair of gloves, that might not be a lot. That might, you know, be a lot. Yeah, you look at it as an investment, and you look at it as something that you're going to use for a long time. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how long gloves last generally. I guess it depends on how hard you're hitting people in pants. Uh, yeah, it does, it does. You yeah. know, and it also depends on, like, you know, the glove that you get. So, like, in some cases, a shelf life for a glove could be six months. A shelf life for a glove could be a year. Shelf life, two years. It really does depend on a person. Sometimes the glove itself, too, because the stitching, you don't know if you got a glove that came from a, you know, a great brand and you just got the, the shit end of the, the, the stick with the, with the glove you got, so now you're stuck with it. Like uh, my girlfriend, she bought me a pair of winning pads. I'll never tell her this. She's going to hear right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm just going to drop one thing on the camera. Yeah, yeah. So, um... She got me a pair of winning pads, great pads. They're, they're, they're expensive. So um, I'm holding pads, holding pads, and I'm realizing some particles are flying. I'm thinking it's dust, right? I'm like, all right, cool, it's dust. Hitting, hitting, hitting. Next thing you know, I'm looking at the bottom. There's like a little hole. I said, oh, shh. Do I tell her? Like, hey, babe, you know, <laughs> this, these pads, you got me. They're a little beat up right now, and they're like, uh, they're, they're, they're shrinking in size, and, you know, all the stuffing's coming out. And that's $500. Is that how much they are? Damn. Winning pads are like five, five fifty. 
So now here's a question. There's got to be some type of warranty on that where you could talk to the manufacturer and be like, yo, dude, I just spent this much money on you. There probably is. But, you know, at that point, it's like a level of embarrassment. Like, oh, shit, I go to my girl and say, hey, here you go. Like, you just bought these for me. Hey, appreciate you. But, yeah. you know, it's, 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 you know, I used them a little too hard. Oh, yeah, way too hard, you know. Thank God. But um, those are definitely hands down the best pads I've ever, you know, utilized to train people with. They, they protect you, and that's at the at the end of the day. If you can see my hands, my hands are swollen. Have you so you were training this morning? Yeah, yeah, my hands are swollen. So, I mean, it's the life, the the lifestyle we live. It's it's crazy. So let's back up. Let's back up to uh, who you are as a uh, human being. Oh, okay. Throw it throw it down. You know, give your name and everything like that, and then let's let's kind of get into what got you into the fighting scene because obviously you didn't just start right out the gate like that. You you had a passion for it. You you figured things out that this was something that you really wanted to get involved with, that you enjoy, and this and that, and this is the journey that you're on. Well, who? Well, let's take a sip for that. Yeah, take a sip. For, I guess take a sip. Rain, send the check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and drop and drop that mic just a little bit down here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Go, go, yeah perfect. perfect. All right. So, um, well, my name is Nas. Uh, I am the owner of Pinpoint Muay Thai. Um, it never started off like that, and to be honest with you. Um, my life has been a little rough, a little rough. Uh, you know, growing up, you have your mom, you got your dad, um, nice family, everybody uh, rough, rough, rough. Um, so growing up for me was uh, a tough one. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to spend that much time with my father. Uh, my father actually died when I was four, one month before my fifth birthday. And uh, it was it was life-changing, uh, very life-changing for me as a, as a kid. Um, I remember it, you know, a lot of people say, when you're that young, you, you're not supposed to remember things like that. Like, I can remember things from when I was three years old. The first bike he gave me, he gave me my first drink. And it was like he, he was giving me and doing things like he knew he was going, which he knew. He knew. He uh, needed a new heart. I was going to ask, is he sick? He was sick. He knew he was going. Um, and I remember, you know, he was, he was cooking in the kitchen. And he broke off a piece of chicken. And he went to give it to me. And, you know, it just collapses. And he falls. So as a kid, I'm like, all right, this is a game. This is a game. Like, this is not a game. He's not moving. What's going on? And I'm playing with him. Like, oh, you know, I didn't know any better. Of course. I mean, listen, you, you were a little little kid. You had no idea. So I actually hooked around the corner, and I, I, I barged in. My mom was in the shower. I said, Mom, 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 you know, Dad's, he's, he's on the floor. He's on the floor. And she goes, what do you mean he's on the floor? I said, dad's on the floor. Like, he's not moving. So she gets out the shower, she rushes, and she sees him. And she calls 911, and she also calls the neighbor across the street, George. I'll never forget. Um, so now I'm witnessing all this stuff, and that stuck with me. And uh, I don't know if you could, I was, like, the first bit of words coming out of my mouth, I was stuck. Before we even turned this podcast on, we no, we, we were chopping it up, but I didn't know what to say or how to say it. And paramedics come in, everybody surrounds, you know, and I'm watching this for about the turn five. Literally, my dad died one month before my fifth birthday. So now. I remember the funeral, I remember everything. And I remember go being downstairs in the, in, in the funeral home and they weren't letting me uh, go upstairs to go see him. I was actually downstairs and hanging out with one of my uncles uh, and he was talking with me and you know, my dad was a huge foundation for the family, huge. Anything you needed, he got it for you. Anything you wanted, he got it for you. Whatever you want, sure, not a problem. Hundreds, thousands, no worries. Left himself with five dollars. Five dollars. Carried himself over to the next day. Like he was that type of person. If he could give you his shirt, you take it. 
run with it. I'll get another one. Eventually, I'll get, I'll get another one, you know? But take. And um, not knowing that, I've actually have that same mentality. Um, so years go by. Uh, I, I went to school in Malvern. If you know where Malvern is, uh, very mixed community, white, black. But I was rare. You didn't see a West Indian person. Um, so throughout school, I got not bullied, but picked on for my appearance. Because you were different than the two majorities that were there. Yes. So you got picked on by both groups? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Um, and then comes 9-11. So now 9-11 comes, and I'm like, oh, shit. You know, I'm, I'm in class, and you see them publicizing, you know, terrorists, and picture pops up. And then kids look at me like, oh, why'd you tell your peoples to, to bomb, you know, the, the World Trade Center? I'm like, my peoples? Like, what are you talking about? And it was like bullying, and bullying, and bullying, and bullying. Like, I come home so upset. My brother would be like, yeah, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing. Like, I, I you know, losing my dad, trying to find my way, and now this. You found that you masked some, a lot of pain? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I kept a lot of stuff, you know, growing up, like my brother like literally took care of me you know my brother sacrificed a lot of his life to take care of me because it was a promise that he made to my father like he's good like you don't have to worry about him like he's good you know and my brother really really like yeah man you know natural athlete pick up anything basketball blow you I, I remember being in the backyard watching him freaking beat three of his friends you know and basketball like damn you know N- raining threes six five raining threes all over everybody it's really good and i, I want to interject real quick it's really good that you had him to take the reins for your father almost because it's not to say that your life would be different in a negative way but definitely he impacted it positively because you're looking at him like he's a role model if i didn't have that i would have I would have been a knucklehead, 100%, because it was in me. It was in me. You know, I, I had that in me. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm a perfect angel, you know, but I had that in me, a knucklehead. So, um, you know, 9-11 comes. I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm fucked. Like, get home. And then my brother was just tired of it. Like, we're going we're gonna to put you in a class. Like, we're going to put you so you learn how to defend yourself. And I'm like, all right, cool. So we went. We, we, he sought uh, some dude. And uh, I was doing one-on-one private sessions with him. And no matter what I did, it was always correct. And he was teaching me Thai boxing, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I throw a jab at the floor. Right, right. You th- so you threw the quotations up. Was it yeah, just yeah, yeah. He thought th- he knew what Thai boxing was, and he wasn't really giving it. Yeah, you know, I threw a jab at the floor. That's good, man. That's good. That's, oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah, he, he, you know, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. You know, And then he puts on a clip of, of, of a guy or his guy fighting. He's like, yeah, he lost. Like, what? You show me a clip of your guy fighting and he loses. Like, how's that going to make me want to come here? You know, like, okay. So I remember driving on, uh, you know, home. And my, my brother was like, yo, how do you like it? I'm like, uh, uh, so then. It's not great. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm the type of guy, you know, you got to try something twice. So we went back, we, we went back again. And I was like, huh, no. It's not for me. He's, he's definitely not for me. So we were looking at different arts, uh, sambo. So you like the ability to learn how to defend yourself and be more disciplined and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. You, you enjoyed that. You I just needed didn't that. enjoy the guy. I needed Yeah. I didn't know I needed that, that at the time, but I needed that because something was missing. You know, something was missing. I didn't know what it was. You know, growing up, like I said, I had no figure. There was a void and you needed to fill it. Yes. So um, we ended up fighting a gym. It's called Extreme Muay Thai. And um, that's actually where I started my Thai boxing. And I remember I walked into the gym, and he's actually my best friend till this day. You know, so uh, I, I saw one of the guys in there. I, I saw his belt, and you know, there's no true belts in, like, Thai boxing. You fight. That's how you tell if, you, you know, you're good or not. You fight. And uh, it was something for, like, the kids program. You know, you had a belt, and... It, gave you confidence it gave you something to work it towards westernized it yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. added a dollar value to it as well too but um i walked up to him and said man i'm gonna whoop your ass i'm gonna take what you got around your belt and he had uh, a waist and i think he had a blue belt so at this at the gym i went to it was white yellow green purple blue 
So I said, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> Flat out. Now, mind you, I didn't have confidence. You know, I was already a broken kid. And for me to, like, like puff your shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big ass chest walked in. I'm going to fuck you up. That wasn't the case. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't did, the case. It didn't work out the way you thought it was going no, to? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I thought it was going to go my way. Not one bit. So I, Which was probably a, a good life lesson for you at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember, see, I remember the message he told me that day. And I doubt he, he, he remembers it. But um, so I, I, I take the trial class my very first day of getting there. Now I'm, I'm 11-ish. Yeah, 11. So uh, I get into there and automatically, uh, you guys are sparring today. And for those of you who don't know what sparring is, it's you put your equipment on, you beat the shit out of each other. Okay. It's pretty much it. You tested your skill, you know. So I said, all right, cool. So I stepped into the ring and kicked somebody's ass. I said, oh, shit, I could do this. I could fucking do this. Like, I could whoop his ass. All right, cool. Kid was there for, like, a year and change. So now here comes my best friend. He gets in there. And he beats the shit out of me. He <laughs> beats the shit out of me. As Jay would say, he beat the brakes off you. <laughs> beat the brakes and then some. He reversed that shit and did it again. <laughs> so I said, fuck. So at the end, of, you know, when I, when I got out of there, he goes, remember that what you said to me the other day? He was like, there's no hard feelings. I was just trying to see what you were made of. I said, no, you're trying to see what I was made of. I said, all right, cool. You're trying to see what I'm made of? All right. I'm going to come for you. Bet. <laughs> I'm going to come for you. So that helped temporarily fill that void of aspiring to be something. Because I didn't know what I wanted to be, you know? Uh, kids could say, listen, you know, I want to be a firefighter. I didn't have that aspiration. Kids could say, I want to be a police officer. I didn't want to be that either. I did not know who I was. Was this your main enjoyment that you were getting? Oh, yeah. And oh. before that, what were you doing? Nothing. 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 I, I'm a gamer. I play video games all day. Still play video games? 100%. We got a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got yeah, a link. Yeah, 100%, man. So um, now I'm training. So that very first sparring session, the owner kind of saw a gem. He said, oh, I'm about to get this kid. So he caught lightning in the bottle. He didn't realize it, but he caught lightning in a bottle. So, um, you know, my training went. I was there every day. Never missed a class. I would be there as soon as class uh, school was over, and I would show up right there. And I would wait for my brother to leave work because he worked at the time at JFK Airport. So he would leave work, and he will come pick me up, take me home. Uh, so now three months into it, right? Sparring is going good. Training's going good. I'm staying for every class at this point, three months into it as a kid. So I remember I was, um, I was home and my brother, my brother's always, anything I do, he's always a part of my life. Like that is like the comfort zone. You know, he'll always be my comfort zone, you know? Um, Hey, what do you think of this? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Hey, what do you think of that? Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it, right? He'll never doubt me. He'll, and he'll never steal you wrong either. No, 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 no. Um, so the owner of the gym calls me. Three months into it, he goes, you want to fight? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I covered the mouthpiece. I'm yeah, like, I want to fight. <laughs> yeah, sure, I want to fight. Of course. Hang up. I start to cry, you know, because now, like, what I experience now starts to, like, show up, you know, like, all the self-doubt, all the who am I, you know, why am I here starts to come out. And I remember, I remember my brother giving me this biggest pep talk. He goes, why are you crying? I'm like, what do you mean why I'm crying? This fucking guy's asking me to fight. He goes, you're a fucking fighter. You don't realize it, do you? Do you know who your grandfather is? It's my grandfather. I only care about him, but I don't know anything about our family. He goes, your grandfather was an undefeated wrestler in, in, in Trinidad. Love that. And, you know, he never lost a fight. And wrestling then was like MMA now. Like, you're legitimately fighting. And he goes, he never lost a fight. I said, wait, how about you? So you tell me my lineage comes from someone who beat the shit out of everybody, and now it's in me? All right, cool. Like, where are we going with this? Did Grandpa stay down in Trinidad? My, no, my grand, I, my grandfather, actually, I didn't have the opportunity to meet him. He okay. actually passed before 
Um, I dad's father or mother's father? My dad's father. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't really know my mom's family too much. Like all I know is my dad's family. Okay. Because most of my mom, if not all, my mom's family is in Trinidad still. So, you know, um, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, my 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 grandfather was a fighter, so I have to be a fighter too. I guess it's yeah, it's, you feel yeah. some type of way. It's like listen, it's like the uh, the ancient Japanese and Chinese yeah, scriptures. Just like yeah. you start seeing the lineage, you're like, you know what? I gotta do my ancestors proud now. I gotta start fucking people up the right way. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So he said, but we're gonna up and. And mind you, I'm training Thai boxing. I know I'm training with elbows. I know I'm training with knees. But never would I thought he would have said this. You're going to fight with no headgear, no shin guards, full rules, elbows, and knees to the face. If they can't agree, you're not fighting. So I said, are you serious? He goes, yeah. So in tournaments, they still they still use? Well, back when I fought, right? Not anymore. I I. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll okay, get, we'll, okay. Because we'll, 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 I was going to say, I thought I thought you would just wear the gear when you were sparring. Well, you wear the gear when you're sparring, but supposed to be as well when you take your first couple fights. Oh, in the intro. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I um, called uh, the owner back. I said, listen, um, these are my demands. If it cannot be met, I'm not fighting. Remind you, three months. Three months. So I said, I want to fight, no headgear, no shin guards, full rules, elbows to the face, knees to the face. If this can't be met, don't call me back. So I'm like, yes, call me back. Three minutes that goes by, fight's on. Done. It's done. <laughs> I said, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the nerves start getting to you. Like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. But, you know, it was very encouraging and very empowering to know who you are. See, a lot of people don't know who they are. And, you know, when you talk to mom, when you talk to dad, they give you that comfort of this is who you are. This is where you came from. This is your family. This is where you're carrying on that legacy. This is where you're going to take that legacy and build on it and build on it and build on it. And then your kids become what we have. And now they compound on it. It doesn't just stop because your grandfather was. So now you are. Carry the torch, uh-huh. the Olympic torch. Everyone oh yeah, yeah, it yeah. <laughs> Give me that shit. I'm running with it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta keep going, man. So uh, you know, I remember. So I had a good. I had a three month training camp, and my 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 brother, he trained, he trained me like he trained me. I remember. Um, I don't recommend any of this stuff. You know, uh, for people who are listening, I do apologize. My uh, my training was was rough. It was rough. So. Um, Besides, like, you, you know, your basic pack work, like, I would always hit the bag. And there was mental repetitions that I would do. I would do things 100, 150 times over and over and over again because I need to perfect it. Like, if I'm stepping into war, like, that's me getting hurt. That's me taking that damage. Like, everybody in the crowd could cheer me and laugh at me and, you know, cry for me and be so happy for me. That's me getting hit. So I needed to be ready. That's my body. That's my pride. That's my life on the line. Yeah, not only that, you know, who wants to get dropped? It's embarrassing. Nobody. Embarrassing. So, um... Most people don't fight because they don't want to get hit in the face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially if you've never been hit in the face. Like, yeah. you know, you don't know that feeling until you get it, and then you don't know if you're going to be that guy that backs down or that goes right back in. Tyson said it the best. Everybody got a game plan so you get hit. And when you get hit, that's really who you are. Like, are you going to just back off? Like, oh, shit. Or are you going to step up to the plate? Fight or flight. Yeah. Amen to that one. Amen yeah. to that one. So, uh, you know, I would, I'd run like three miles, two to three miles on off days, and at most maybe four miles. So I was putting in mileage. Not only was I putting in mileage, I was also lifting. I was doing things that at my age I wasn't seeing like my friends do. So I'm like, what the fuck? All right, cool. So I was in great shape, man, great shape. I was beating up at that time. And mind you, we haven't crossed over a year yet. We're still, you know, within this training camp. Year. I was beating up adults. I'm like, adults. I was short. I was, I didn't weigh much. I think a wet towel weighed more than me <laughs> at times, you know. Um, and I would, I would get the best of adults. And I'm like, all right, this could be good. Like, this could be good. So now we finally get there. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's back up. So, like, everyone asks me, well, what do you do for your shins? Like, how do you condition your shins? Kick the bag. Not this one. 
This one over here, every night after I was I would train, my brother would actually roll out my shins with what? <laughs> it started off with wood. And from wood, more pressure. Like a, like, what, what, like a um like a rolling pin? Yeah, yeah. Like like a kendo stick type of wood, right? But we could kind of say rolling pin because we'll get there. Don't worry, we'll get there. Um, then it turned into a wooden rolling pin. Mm. Then it turned into a piece of wood, a long piece of wood that was uh, coated or, or uh, had a metal coating. So it was a long piece of wood with a metal coating on it, right? And then it turned into a quartz rolling pin, which there were nights I would cry. Rough quartz, I assume, not smooth quartz. Rough. Yeah, I would cry. And just the weight of that, it was... Yeah. So um, we'll get there. I got a lot of stories on that one. So... Um, now fighting. I'm in there warming up. Um, I, I was used to it. So when I hit pads in the gym, like, you have parents come in and watch me. Like, it was a scene when I hit pads. Like, it was a scene. And um, parents saying, damn, I wish my kid was, you know, that good. Or I wish my kid was this. I wish my kid did that. So I was used to people watching me. I had a lot of people watch me that day. Just warming up. So my very first fight was in Brighton Beach Theater. And that show was <laughs> hacked. So now, three months training, three months training camp, six months into it. So I'm getting ready. I'm walking into the ring. And the announcer comes up to me. He goes, Nas, how old are you? I'm 11. Do you want to be a pro? Sure. <laughs> you know, right? I didn't know, you know. Uh, how, many exper- uh, you know how many fights do you have? This is my first. All right, good luck, buddy. All right? And I'm like, good luck, buddy. So I turn my back, and I goes over to the dude. And I was fighting like a Russian. Were you fighting another 11-year-old kid? No. It's a grown-ass man? No, 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 no. He was probably like 13, 14. Okay, It still. gets better. This gets better. Still, still. I'm about to knock you out your yeah, seat right now, let's right? Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, how old are you? I'm like 13, 14. How many fights you have? I'm 12 and 0. Sick. So the whole uh, music stops. I said to the guy, I said, did he just say 12 and 0? He goes, yeah, yeah, don't worry, you'll be fine. So, side note, would you have preferred to know his fight record prior? Yes. And then almost, you, you don't think you would psych yourself out? I No, because it would have made me train harder. Mm. It would have made, because if I'm Because in my mind, I would have I would have rather have just known that I was going against a kid that's older than me. Yeah. And from there, I would probably have to train my ass off. Mm-hmm. But if I knew that this dude was 13 and 0, 12 and 0? 12 and 0. 12 and 0. If I knew this dude was 13 and 0, yeah. I feel like that would get in my head a little bit. I'd be like, well, fuck. This is my first fight. Oh, well, no, it got in my head right there. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if you knew that months ago, I feel like it would have gotten in your head. Yeah, yeah. It would have psyched you out. Yeah. Would have psyched you out. I'm not saying you would have done bad. I'm not saying your training wouldn't have been hard, but it definitely would have gotten under your skin and under your, and in your brain. And every time you're hitting a pad, you're like, damn, you know? Whether it's negative or positive yeah. outcome from that, you're just like, damn. Fucking 12 and 0, 12 and 0. Like, and that would have made me train harder. Like, the fact of me knowing that would have made me train harder. Like, I got to work twice as hard as you now because you have that experience. It would have pushed me. And, you know, if I would have just relayed that message, just, you know, back to, you know, my brother, he'd have been like, oh, it's game time. <laughs> it's game time. So, um, you'd be like, oh, course rolling pin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to get steel with spikes now. No, let, <laughs> let, let, let's call Thanos. Let's go use the fucking <laughs> infinity gauntlet on your fucking shins. Fucking beating your fucking shins up. <laughs> yeah. So, um, ding, ding, fight gets off. I remember he, he lands, like, the first shot. I said, oh, you son of a bitch. And it was, from there on out, I was fucking his ass up. Big time. I remember, um, because I w- had the upper hand on clinching, but he was rushing. So he had Sambo. He had What's Sambo? Break Sambo, that down Sambo is like uh, judo, or uh, it's, it's very much similar to judo for, um, for a Russian practitioner. So hip tosses, things like that. I wasn't used to hip tosses. I was, in, I was straight on clinching, clinching. So I was getting the best of him on the clinching aspect. And then he goes, monkey flip my ass. I'm like, whoa, bam, hit the fucking ground. Everything's upside down. Yeah. Now, the ring. The ring was like metal. The ropes, when you see a boxing match, you see the give on the ropes. This fucking ring had no give. Is this all Muay Thai? All Thai boxing. All Thai boxing? All Thai boxing. Check this out. I want to see this ring. I'm you cur- I'm you will see a ring right now, right? 
and a ring, the ropes it gives, right? This particular ring that we fought on, fought in had zero give. It was metal with just like, uh, you know, the wrapping, the uh, styrofoam around it. Yeah, if that was metal, that looks uncomfortable. Is, is it similar to your gyms? No, no, but that one had give. That has give, I'm saying, but that's the same style. You see outline? how it had that foam around it? Yeah. So think of it not moving at all, stiff, with that foam. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound pleasant. No, not one bit. I remember because I, I, being smaller and fighting like adults, I would always fight off the ropes. I was small, so I learned how to utilize the added leverage I could get off of the rope to add into my shot. I learned that at a young age, so I said, fuck it. It was an advantage for you. It was. It was. So when they thought they were backing me up on the ropes in training, it was like, come on. This is what I want. This is what I live for, man. <laughs> come, is... come to my domain. Yeah. So, um, you know, I beat them. I didn't think I was going to beat him, but I fucking beat the guy. It felt so good. So good. So now um, I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to take a little break. Must have spiked your confidence. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, you know, growing up, like, I had two brothers, so... My oldest brother, Ravi, right? And the middle is Rishi. So they were like my biggest supporters at the time. Like, go ahead, you got this shit. And, you know, whenever uh, I would go hang out with Rishi, he will always try to like, yo, this is my brother. Yo, yo, put him in a clinch, put him in a clinch. You know, out clinch people and shit like that. And like, they both talked so highly of me, you know. Anytime they went to, uh, to, to hang out with friends or, you know, work or whatever the case may be, say I'm calling Ravi, I'm like, hey, can I speak to Ravi, please? Like, oh, this the champ. <laughs> you know, this the champ. I'm like, I guess, can I please speak to him? <laughs> it was it was always so good knowing I had that. I had that from them. So now, uh, what I thought would have been some off time, right? It wasn't off time. It was, hey, you you're gonna fight again. You're gonna fight again. And um, I said, All right, cool, I'll fight again. Um, and then, hey, you're gonna fight again. All right, cool, I'll fight again. But there was still like a void I was missing. See, what a lot of people don't realize is. Fighting is an art. Painting is an art. Writing a book, that's an art. Fighting was an escape. It was. Training was an escape. But when I was done with it, I had to pick that bag up and realize who I was. Because that void that I thought I filled wasn't filling. It wasn't filling. It filled it, you know, momentarily. But it never properly filled that void. And I was always... You know, finding myself missing something. What? What is it? I just never knew. And then I think I was talking to one of my buddies. And no, it was Jamal. Yeah. <laughs> and it was Jamal. Not, not, not Jamal Jamal. It was oh, another okay. Jamal. I, I know another Jamal. I was about to say. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Jamal, this is what I'm going through. Like, why me? Why did I have to lose my dad? You know? Why... Can I have some more time with them to learn things that a boy should learn from their father? And he said to me, he goes, don't worry. My father walked out on me. I said, fuck. You know, I've known Jamal since I was three years old. My Jamal, not our Jamal, my yeah, Jamal. Yeah, yeah. I've known Jamal since I was three years old, but at that time he admitted his father walked out on him. So me and him came like, we we're brothers brothers like you can't separate me and jamal like in school he got in trouble i was footsteps away i got in trouble too and if i got in trouble he was always footsteps away so there's an emotional tie especially at that point yeah um it's funny because before we were even born his mother knew my father and had a major crush on my father so not knowing that my dad i mean she knew but like no yeah he was married. It's like, no, oh, my God, that's Jai Singh. Oh, my God, he's so cute. Look how cute he is. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shoot, now fast forward. You know, the two kids are our best friends. So um, Life works in mysterious ways. It really does. It really does. And I remember I had that heart-to-heart with him, and he told me that. I said, shit, I'm not alone. And at that point, it gave me a little more confidence. Bag was still empty, you know, but it wasn't as empty because I knew – if I had Jamal, no matter where I was, I, I had somebody in my support back. circle was getting stronger. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, still training, uh, and I was training like a madman, a madman. Like there were times where you know I didn't want to train, I just wanted to relax. 
and one day I was leading into one of my fights, and um, I was sparring with my coach, Terrence Connor, and uh, I think I might have went six rounds with him. Big grown dude's amazing. He's to me, I don't care who you show. If you ask me who's my favorite fighter, hands down, favorite fighter, my head coach. You, you can't change my mind. I mean, I have other favorite fighters, but that's that's like my number one. That's there's, a, there's a reason he's uh, your head coach, too. Yeah, idol. I love that man to death. You know, anytime we had fights, he'd always take me. If I wanted food, he always paid for it. He never asked for anything. Like, he was genuine, genuine, dope, 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 loving guy. And um, finished sparring six rounds with him. Now, Sparring at that time, I believe it was from like 12 o'clock to like 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock to 2.30-ish, right? So last time I wa would be, for that day, 7 in the morning because I was there all day. So I ate 7 in the morning to be at the gym at 9 o'clock, take class, do all that stuff. And this is at, this is at what age? Maybe like 13, 14, still, you know, still before 15. So it definitely was this during the summer that you were training like this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah, yeah. with school and everything like that with the time period. Well, it would be on Saturday. So sparring gotcha, was always okay. Saturday, sorry. About I didn't know that. I didn't know if you were taking classes during the week, that's why. Oh uh, no, no no, but there were. Yeah. There were. We'll, we'll get there because my summers I lived in the gym. I never ever was home. I always lived in the gym. So um I remember we uh we went to sparring and then we went straight from sparring to my cousin's house, which is down the block from my house. Not literally like it's Probably less than like three minute drive, if that. And I get there and they're cooking. I'm like, shit, this smells so good. Fuck, I gotta train. And my brother was so hardcore on train, train, train. You have to train because your opponent's not training. I'm sorry, your, your opponent's training. So the day you stop training is the day he has that leverage. When you're over. sleeping, they're training. Oh, 100%. And I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck. So I'm like, what's that? You guys got any? <laughs> I popped my head in. And my brother said, don't even think about it. Like, you have to go train. So, you know, my uh, uncle, because my cousin's house, my uncle's, uh, my uncle's child. So uh, there used to be, I think it's still there to this day, a tree with a fat branch. And they would do pull-ups on it. So that would have been a part of my regimen to do, you know, pull-ups because the grip strength is great for clinching. So I'm like, damn, I don't want to run, don't want to do this, don't want to do that. I just want to eat. So I looked at my brother. I was very fussy, very, very, very fussy. I said, come on, man, please. I'm starving. I don't want to train. He said, you don't want to train? I said, no, I don't. He goes, all right, cool. Go kick six pairs out the tree. You don't want to train that bad? Go kick six pairs out the tree. Kick six pairs out the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, shit, six pairs out the tree? Not a problem. So I looked for the lowest one. Bam, that shit out of the tree. So now you're kicking the actual pairs? Yeah. Or you kicking the stump of the tree? You're no, to get shake out. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. So I see the lowest one and I kick it out. I see the next lowest one, I kick that shit out too. I'm like, yo, this is easy. Like, all I gotta do is look for the lowest ones. So he goes, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm kicking six pairs out the tree. Yeah. This is what you want. I'm going to do what you asked. He goes, no, 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 no. You misunderstood me. I said, what do you mean I misunderstood you? I want you to kick that fucking tree and shake six pairs out the tree. Where's the bark of a pear tree? Like ah, that? shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I said, okay. Not knowing, like, my shin would have been kind of, like, bruised up. But I didn't feel it, though. I kicked the shit maybe, like, three, five times. Six pairs dropped. I said, show me my plate right now. It was it was crazy. I gotta be honest with you, pear tree bark doesn't look fun. No, no sir, no sir. So um, I got my plate, I got my food. I what was, was happy. what was the food? Um, so Trinidadians call the way that they stewed it a bunje, right? So it's like stew. So um, I had I remember that that meal because that meal was heaven. My aunt cooked and she's like the best, like the best cook in the family. So I had bunje pork. And I think white rice. Mm. So white I rice goes with everything, man. Oh my god, fucking gum that shit down. I was like, yo, can we go home? I want to take a nap now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I call itis. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was about to say, you got the itis. My man's like, oh, I'm ready to just pass out. I'm good, man. No trading today. That's it. But you know, um, when I would run on the track, um, the high school coach 
would be, do you see that kid? Because he saw me every fucking time, running, running, running. I would run laps around, uh, you know, his guys who are, who are, and I think they were high schoolers. So I would run fucking laps around him. And he always highlights me. He goes, you guys got to train hard like that fucking kid. That fucking kid trains his fucking ass off. I don't know what the fuck he's training for, but he trains his ass he's off. He's training for something. <laughs> he's training for something. He's training for life. So um, no one knew anything. And that was the greatest thing in my back pocket. Now, remember I told you, I went to school with jerks. So I remember I got into one fight. No one knew anything. And I, I killed him. I killed this dude. I killed him. And from there on, like, everyone kind of watched what they said to they me. They watched their mouth. Uh-huh. And they watched, watched their actions. Mm-hmm. You remember what Jamal said? I mean, from an era of accountability. Yep. Yep. Oh, they were held accountable, all right. Yep. Everybody who then crossed me, and I wasn't a bully. See, but what I was able to do was I was able to actually hang out with every crowd. I was able to hang out with the Spanish people. I was able to hang out with, with uh, white people. I was able to hang out with black people, and I got accepted by everybody. And before, it's, you know, fight. Your back is against the wall. Your back is against the wall. Because there literally was no West Indian males in there. You had a couple females. And then little by little, I started to see a little bit more and a little bit more. But um, That's always wild for me to hear because I'm so used to being around everybody and being friends with everybody and, I'm, and not caring what somebody looks like i'm caring more about their actions than them as a appearance you know what i'm saying it, not everybody thinks that way that that's true but ready let's backtrack to when you were a kid right you might have saw uh, a, a big person made fun of them you didn't know any better yeah kids are ruthless and Our, kids don't really have a filter they see something they say something and then through their experiences they get told don't say that again don't do that. You know, when when you don't have that experience of someone saying, don't say that, don't do that, and they encourage it, then that becomes okay to say. Accountability. Mm-hmm. Cha-ching. I think we need to get a, a message. Message. Yes. Acc- <laughs> yes. Accountability <laughs> flashing across the street. Yes. Yes. I, I remember when I was younger and I went to Kung Fu, and um, one of the guys that was working at the studio, young kid, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember, I don't remember, like, it's one of those words that I was very young and I don't remember like everything. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's crazy how certain things that that people things that people may say to you mm-hmm. or people that do something to you. Yeah. Even if even if you don't remember anything else from that that decade or whatever it might be or era, mm-hmm. little things stick out to you that are thumbprints on your brain. Like this was an experience that was very big for you, so this is what we're going to remind you of constantly. And it's not that I'm reminded of constantly. I'm just I just think back to this moment, him, and I don't remember the particulars of it, but mm-hmm. him and the other kid that worked there were making fun of handicapped people or oh, something like man. that. And I was a little kid, yeah. so they told me to say something, and I, not to a person, but just in general, and I yeah. said something, and then they're all laughing because I said it, so I felt cool for literally 0.2 seconds, and then I was swiftly reminded that my father has multiple sclerosis and is handicapped. And that stuck with me even mm-hmm. as a little kid i didn't know what i was saying but you were trying to fit in at that point and, and kids i didn't will know say, what i was saying yeah. and it's still to this day that's that thumbprint of that experience was i won't say traumatic but mm-hmm. that experience was standoutish enough <laughs> yeah. for me the realization of going what are you doing like your dad is a handicap and i was a little kid yeah you know because i remember seeing the handicap sticker in my dad's window everywhere we went so mm-hmm. i'm just like oh and it just Oh, it just sat weird with me. As a kid, you don't know any better. Correct. You don't. And you try to fit in. So a joke to fit in. An older kid joking around with you, you, just, you feel cool. You feel important. You feel yeah. wanted. And, and that's what we look for. Yeah. Validation. Exactly. Throughout life, you look for validation. Your hard work needs to be accredited with validation, right? Great video, Nick. Nas, nah, you, you coach that great fighter. You know, and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel wanted. It makes you feel loved. And these are all like endorphins that run through our mind that gives us that high. We are complete. But it's only temporarily. Because guess what? One thing comes up, throws you into, uh, to, throws a monkey wrench into your day, and now you're all fucked. <laughs> you know? But um, 
Yeah, so I remember for one of my fights, um, I had my brother, Rishi. Um, he, uh, we were driving to, shit, Jersey. I was fighting the promoter's boy, and I realized how hard it is to fight a promoter's boy then. Because I, I was hitting this fucking kid with everything in the kitchen sink. And it didn't matter if I dropped the fucking kid, the ref would have picked him up. I got hit him with everything. And mind you, I had no headgear, no shin guards, and this fucking kid had everything on him. Everything. Headgear, shin guards. Why was he allowed to wear it and you weren't? I said to him when I got there, I said, I'm not fighting with gear. I don't care. I don't care what the sanctioned body has to say. I'm telling you what it is. This is what it is. Now it's much different. Like, you know, he wear headgear, you have to wear headgear. He wears shin guards. Gotta keep it equal. Yeah, you have to keep it equal. I flat out said, I'm not putting this shit on. I'm sorry. We sold a whole shitload of tickets. I will fucking walk. We sold a whole bunch of tickets that day. So Bruno was like, fuck, you gotta let him fight. Because he's really not gonna fight right now. And they let me fight. So one side had headgear shin guards. I didn't. And I was beating the shit out of him. The kid didn't hit me not once. Not one fucking time. And they said, winner by split decision. I said, fucking split decision? Now, let me backtrack. So now, um, the reason why I was fighting so hard, I always fight hard, but I was fighting even harder. See, uh, Rishi, he actually told me, he said, listen, you better fucking win today. Like, I took off. I came here to see you, and I support you. You're not always support. You're my brother, but, you know, I took off to come see you fucking fight. So you better not lose, motherfucker. And he took my boy Kevin at the time. And Kevin's like, yeah, 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 we're going to win. We're going to win. He goes, yeah, y'all better win because if y'all lose, y'all both walking home. <laughs> I said, fuck, why you got to open your mouth for? <laughs> so um, I fought. Uh, I fight first. I fought first. I fucking, I beat the shit out of the guy. But he still split decision. He won. No, I won. I won. Oh, that's I, right. I thought this was the yeah. same fight for no, no, no. Proto's kid. No. So I, but. He didn't hit me. For it to be a split decision, it had to have been a fucking close fight. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It was never. They made a split decision like they were going to give it to him. It, but they made it very yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. They made it seem like there was there was a reason that, uh, that he should even be a contender against it. Yeah, not one bit. Fucking, I was hitting him. I was lifting him up. Second round, I just kept kneeing him, kneeing him. I kept him in a clinch. I really realized he couldn't clinch. So I kept kneeing him and kneeing him. And I was lifting him off the floor. Like, that's how hard I was hitting him. But then I said to myself, said, what do I have to do? Put him away. Like, I really can't put him away. So um, I end up winning. Now Kevin fights. So Kevin loses. Kevin decided to throw 200 kicks in the first round, which you don't ever want to do. But let's say, is that not smart? No, no, no. <laughs> Get first, yourself out. Yeah, first fight jitters. You know, that happens to people. If your coach is not properly, you know, directing you um, and guiding you through the fight, like, you'll blow your load in the first round and not realize that. Shit, I got another round to fight and another round after that to fight. And Kevin did that. Kevin blew his load, and he couldn't fight. He had nothing. So he won the first round, hands down. Hands down. Lost the second round, lost the third round. So they gave it to the other guy. So now Kevin comes to me. He goes, hey, can you do me a favor? I said, why are you whispering? I don't want to talk too loud. I said, what happened? He said, can you talk to your brother? Because your brother said, I'm walking home. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't worry. You, you should be good. So uh, Sorry, he I'll put you on the roof like a Christmas tree. Yeah. So um, I'll throw you some string. <laughs> I'll, hold, I'll hold you down the back seat. What are you holding back there? Nothing. Don't worry about it. You know, so um, my uh, my brother drops him home. So uh, I I fought actually in two nationals. Um, one in a weight class I had zero business being in. Um, how I weighed in, I'm about to put all my secrets out there. There were certain fights that me and my cousin Andy couldn't truly make weight for. So we would take like cell phones and keys and whatever you had that was heavy and put our jeans, like we had jeans on. Like you see like now UFC fighters, like they strip down, down, right? You see them in their fucking underwear, their shirt, whatever the case may be, and they'll step onto the scale. That was um, not us. Like to get fights, we had to go up in weight classes. Oh, so you'd have you'd put extra weight on you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll wear jeans. Jeans, I don't know how much jeans, you know, weigh. You know? Yeah, maybe a pound, a couple ounces. No. How, how much do jeans weigh? Now, this very is where curious. things get very, very tricky. All right? So we have cell phones, keys in our pocket. Change. Whatever the fuck we can that has weight is what we're stepping on a scale with. Just to get close to to the, you know, the weight that we had to fight at. So um twelve ounces. 
12 ounces. Lightweight jeans are less than 12 ounces. Midweight jeans are 12 to 15 ounces. Heavyweight jeans are 16 ounces. What the fuck constitutes heavyweight jeans? I don't know. Old Navy? <laughs> <laughs> the material's so thick. Yeah. So uh, what, whatever we need to do to, to make the weight is whatever we needed to do to make the weight. And we were there to fight. Didn't matter. You know, you want to fight at 55? Sure. I'll be 125. Let's fight. Didn't care. So I actually entered in a weight class for for nationals. I fought, I fought this fight in uh, Jersey. There's a sports center right around the bridge area. I'm bad with, like, locations. Um where it was a sports complex, and they held the nationals there. I think it was the USKBA uh, nationals there. Okay. And I won the fight. I won the fight. So I'm fighting in a weight class heavier than mine. I won that fight, and by default, I ended up winning the whole tournament. I was supposed to fight two more times after that, and then the dropped out. So I said, okay, this is cool. I'm going to fight again. All right. It was, a rough, it was a rough one because it was against someone that was heavier than me. But I did it. And then... Um, uh, what I realized was the reason why no one else fought was there were fights breaking out. People were very upset at, at us as a gym because we would go there uh, as a gym and clean house, clean house. And it could have been some some uh, commotion between the owner of... Uh, Across all the divisions you guys are clean house? Any, any, any gym. Like I said, this man, the owner of the gym called Lightning in a Bottle. He had Lightning in a Bottle. If this man would have treated us better, right, his gym would, one, still be around, and two, be dominant. Dominant. Like, it was so many people that came out of that gym. So many people came out of gym. Myself, my head coach, my cousin Andy, uh, my best friend, Terrence Hill, Jarrell, Wayne Barrett. Um, and you know, the list goes on of people who may not have that same star level name as us, but, um, they were still great fighters. Like we had legit, uh, like superstars, like A's, B's, C's, D's, E's. I was having this conversation the other day with, um, with one of the students who knew some people from, from the gym that we came from. And he was like, yeah, that guy was great. And back in my mind, I'm like, he wasn't even like one of the A's. He was just like, you know one of the, the regular dudes, like, I watched him get beat up by a girl, you know, only with one arm, not le legitimately one arm, like, she legitimately just kept jabbing him, jabbing him, jabbing him, and he had no answer for it. Like, how can he be this great and can't stop a jab, right? But the girl was well-trained. She was. So to his defense, all right, I give you a little slack. But you're supposed to be able to maneuver around a woman um, because you're always moving with men, right? They're... they're in this in this art that we're in. Oh my god, he's saying something horrible. There's a disadvantage for her? How dare you? In this art that we're in, <laughs> right? Um just now, the women's fighting has really kind of turned the corner. Now, back then it wasn't like that. Um, you know, the skill set of the women now are much superior than the skill set of the women, you know, that we had growing up. So it's two different two different levels now. Yeah. Like if you take someone from now and you take someone from you know twenty years from now, the the chick from now will walk circles around the chick from twenty years ago. So you know it was it's definitely different levels. Yeah. So we we were having that conversation and I started telling him everybody we had in the gym. He goes, "Holy shit! Like that gym would have been legit, still a powerhouse." He didn't know how to train and you know teaches his guys to you know the respect and. He didn't love us like he 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 loved us to 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 a certain extent, but he didn't really love us. It was just property. Yeah, and that's how he treated us. We were just property. So remember, I said property, right? So um, getting older, getting older, but now I'm starting to see things that in life was very rough for me to deal with. See, my my two lifelines were my brothers. I love my mom to death. So let's you know, eliminate that that aspect. My mom is always like, it's queen. Yeah, hundred percent. It's queen. Um, Ravi, Rishi. That's all I know. That's all I knew. And I started to see some things in Rishi's life that was very, very, very concerning. See, I had that 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 half fill feeling. And so did he. 
Ravi, he hid his halfway feeling because he had to worry about us. So he, Ravi, he lived through us. And anything we needed, we always got it through Ravi. My brother was going through a lot. Um, you know, there were times where for him to fit in, he would tell people, like, he's Spanish. You know, like, for you to have to tell someone, I'm another in the ethnicity, speaks volumes. Speaks volumes. You know, for you to hide who you are as a West Indian, speaks volumes. And we're still going through this whole Iranian and, you know, Afghani thing, Bush, you know, all that stuff. I'm not a big political guy, right? But um, he had to do that. He, he worked at uh, BMW in Freeport. And this was kind of like the downfall, coupled with the fact that a girl broke his heart. So this was kind of like a downfall. So I remember, um, I remember him coming home, right? And I remember my brother telling me the story of he got home and he saw a grease mark on his eye. And apparently someone mushed him. Yeah, someone mushed him at work. What does that mean? Just like? Yeah, took it and mushed him. Oh, hand to the face. Yeah, calling him stupid, you know, whatever the case may be. Making fun of him, too. And um, everybody has challenges, you know. Not to say my brother had a learning disability, but he took him a little time to get certain things down. And uh, very, very, very smart, in my opinion, right? I'm biased. (laughs) But... um, you know, he came home and he had a grease mark on his face. And I remember seeing it, but I didn't say much. He left that grease mark there. Till the next day, he showered and everything, that grease mark was still there. Like, he was so embarrassed to, like, own what happened. And then I asked him, I said, dude, what happened? Like, what happened? And I'm younger than him. Mm-hmm. And he opened up what had happened. So I said, all right, cool. So my older brother doesn't realize I did this. But I actually went to his job in Freeport. And I said, who the fuck touched my brother? Like, who the fuck is he? And I ended up getting, like, kicked out, escorted out, shit. But I was so furious. Like, I was willing to go to juvie, like, on some shit. I was willing to to, to hurt this man because you're not going to hurt my brother you know and these are all I know um but I started to see the downfall so he quits his job girl breaks his heart and now he's in limbo like he's mentally in limbo and if you don't know what limbo is you need to watch Inception right that's uh leading out the cap yeah that was like limbo the uh the per- it's technically like a purgatory type state so that's where he be- that's where he was he was a shell a person just walking and I'm training, I'm still trying to focus, and I can't focus because now you got my brother depressed. He's depressed. So he is telling everybody his life is a movie. My life's a movie. They're watching me. They're looking at me. This movie needs to end. And he would tell my mom, I'm going home. I'm going home. And we didn't know where he meant, by like, you're going home. And then he would always tell my mom, you know, I'm going to go see dad. I'm going to go be with him. You know, my, my brother and my dad had a great relationship. You know, both my brothers, you know, my dad had an amazing relationship. Um, my brother, Ravi, told me a story where um, Rishi had a school trip, and he ended up spending the money, something along the lines of that. And it was an expensive trip, right, to a degree. My father ends up going there and paying for it again and giving the lady the money. Saves like five, seven hundred dollars. Goes, does it again. Like, they had an amazing relationship. And he would then, you know, constantly tell my mom, I'm going home. I'm going to see dad. And Ravi would be like, dude, why are you telling mom this? Like, why are you telling, like, he put him in his place temporarily. So then Rishi started to realize, I can say this when he's not there. I could do that when he's not there. So when Ravi wasn't there, the, the strong, the strength of... Pushing, pushing boundaries. Yes. 
he would tell us all as a family, I'm going to go home. This movie's over. And uh, one day, um, we're all hanging out. And uh, our thing, uh, I don't know if you were a big blockbuster guy. I love blockbuster. Dude, I love blockbuster. Blockbuster was the shit. I used to rent video games from them. <laughs> I never return them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I don't know what you're talking about. I returned it the other day. What do you mean? Yeah, dude, it was there. Trust me. I put it in a drop. I put it in a drop box. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was our thing where we would go to to uh, Blockbuster. We would rent movies. Um, go to the Burger King because we would always go to the West Hempstead location. Mm-hmm. Get food. Come back. Watch a movie. Um, so we're upstairs. I lived in Hempstead, by, uh, West Hempstead, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that was. I, I lived in West Hempstead. For real? Yeah, Arthur Street. Damn, you lived right, down the block right from right me. Right by the Duck Pond. You know where the car wash is on Woodville Road? Yeah. Uh, where the Mercedes Benz dealership? Mm-hmm. I live right over there. I was right behind Carvel. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. We're so close, yeah. man. We get so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. I know. So um, we, we, we're we going to, 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 to Blockbuster. We got everything. Come back. And on the on the way back, he said, you know, he's basically giving me like a verbal will. Like a verbal will. And he's like, anything that was mine is yours now. I love you to death. Like, don't ever think anything of this. Like, the room is yours. The bed is yours. He had a uh, water bed. That's yours. Uh, My car is yours. Everything is yours. Now, a couple days before before this, right, Um, one brother had a Mitsubishi Galant and one brother had a a BMW. So I always wanted to learn how to drive stick shift. So uh, I remember um, him teaching me. So... Actually, was driving the car, right? And I got a flat tire. So Rishi said to Ravi, the older brother, he said, I'm the one that drove the car. And they were cussing each other out because that's this car, you know? That was that was Ravi's car, mm-hmm. you know? He used that to go to work. He needed to go to work. And now he has a fucking flat tire. Like, fuck. Like, when were we going to tell him that, you know, there's a flat tire? Shame, you know, shame on me and shame on him. But we should have done that. But... They got into a really bad argument, so they're not talking at this point. Having said maybe two days, three days maybe, not talking to each other. So fast forward, right? So now he's giving me this verbal will, like, all my stuff is yours. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So we go upstairs. We're watching uh, a movie, and I said, are you hungry? He goes, no. I said, come on, man. Like, you didn't even eat your Burger King. Right, I ate most of it for you. Um, come on, let's eat. Eat something, man. He goes, nah, I can't. I said, all right, how about this? If I order Chinese food, could we share it? And he loved, uh, he loved uh, chicken and broccoli. So I got chicken and broccoli, white rice. He ate a little bit. I ate a little bit. I said, all right, I'm going to go to sleep now. He goes, okay. So it was like switching of the guards because Ravi wakes up and he's going on his work computer to check emails, whatnot. It was something that he would do, you know, throughout periodically. And I go downstairs. And the way I woke up, I would never wish this on anybody. Is to have your mother screaming, crying. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. My mom bawled. So now I get up. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And my mom said, your brother's dead. I said, what? Go look, your brother's in the back. So they wouldn't let me outside. I had to go to to my aunt's room to see the backyard and see my brother on the floor. Now my brother, Ravi, had to go out there and cut him down because he hung himself in our backyard. And that broke me. Not only did I lose my dad, I lost one lifeline in my life. Fuck, like, I really don't know what to do. Lost. Lost. And Ravi picked himself up because he had to and be a figure for me. He never let anybody see him, like, fall. As much as, you know, he would, like, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm good. Like, it bothered me. So now I'm in a huge, huge, huge depression. Huge. I'm like, I want to give up fighting. I want to give up training. I don't want to do anything. And um, 
it was actually Jarrell. Jarrell actually, you know, picked me out of my my mental state. See, me and Jarrell has always had each other's back, back to back. Um, For those that don't know, Jarrell, big baby Miller. Yes, that's that's my cousin. Like he he picked me up, um, and I would tell him things, and you know he he would he he understood. Like he understood. So um, I got back into the swing of it little by little, but it was still very, very emotional because I, I felt if I was going to get in the ring, have you ever had a thought of killing somebody? Yeah. Okay. I did. I did off of pure anger. Never, never did it. Off of pure anger, yes. Because people led this to happen. See, people, kids can get away with it because they don't know any better. But as an adult, you should know that how your words now is affecting an adult differently. Some people could say, nah, I brushed this shit off, but some people... And you don't know if someone's having a bad... Before we even started this, I said, hey, man, uh, you know, I, I went to Target. So I went to Target, and I realized that the guy... That was, you know, the, the, at the cash register, he was having a bad day. I was having a basic conversation, a basic conversation. I said, you know what? At the end of it, I said, I hope your day turns around. The man smiled. He said, you're the first and only person who's ever said that to me. Thank you. So, you know, you, don't, you just don't know what people are going through. And my brother, my brother and myself, we had that baggage of our father not being there. So, um, Drell, Drell picked me up big time, Pick, picked me up big time. It's a hard thing for anybody to go through. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man, sharing experiences, me and Drell, um, he's another person, you know, when you saw Drell, you saw me, you know, you saw me, you saw Drell. So, um, I remember, uh, I, I fought, I fought a bunch of times in between this time span, right? Um. And I remember going into uh, nationals, and this is actually the first time I've actually fought post my brother. So I kicked everybody out the locker room, and I bawled. I cried. I cried. It was emotional for me. And I didn't know. I cried on so many aspects of I didn't know if I was really going to kill somebody in the ring. I didn't know what was going to happen. I cried and cried and cried. And they're like, you're up right now. I said, I'm not coming out right now. You guys got to give me a sec. And then I picked myself up and I said, it's game time. Like, you got to fucking do this. Now. Damn, you poor opponent. <laughs> well, I'm going to pause right there. Because leading into training, I hurt myself. Okay. And I had a slight uh, tear in my shoulder. I was forced to fight. I was given two options. You fight or you get the fuck out the gym. That was it. Well, getting the fuck out of the gym was never an option. So I'm fighting. I'm hurt. I'm going to fucking fight. Yeah. So now, pause, play. So now um, I walked to the ring and I said, I'm going to beat the shit out of you, kid. I'm going to fucking beat the shit out of you. And you remember my story about Kevin gassing out? Yeah. I fucking, I laid it out all, all on the line the first round. I said, I'm taking this guy out the first round. I don't care. I don't care. You're leaving. You got to go. <laughs> if your name is Joe, you got to go. <laughs> but his name wasn't Joe. So I was like, fuck, I guess you're here to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it is what it is. So I couldn't get him out the first round. I ended up getting him out the third round. But I further hurt myself. Because in the second round of me trying to get him out the first round, I was very limited, so I was only just throwing one arm kicks. Um, and in the third round, I, was, I just got, you know, muscle, mental, mental muscle, just fucking pulled together. And I took him out. So um, by default, once again, uh, my, my, my fight leads other people to seeing me, and they just don't continue in the bracket. So I end up winning the nationals again by default. <laughs> you know, hey, two-time national by default because I fought my first fight, and no one rose up the bracket. Yeah, after that. 
So who was supposed to fight me didn't show up. And who was supposed to fight me after that didn't show up again. So I said, fuck, all right, I'll take Love it. That. I'll take that. Love Shit. That. Um, so I was in a sling, and I'm in the, in the crowd. And I remember uh, Phil Nurse. Phil Nurse is actually one of the best Thai boxing practitioners around here. And he goes, um, Singh. He used, to, he used to call me by my last name all the time. Singh, you're wasting your time. Wasting my time? What do you mean I'm wasting my time? He goes, that man can't take you nowhere. Not my head coach, just the owner of the gym. Can't take me anywhere. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're wasting your time. That man can't do nothing for you. Come to me. Come. Like, come to the gym. Like, be one of us. So I said, all right, um, I'll think about it. Right? I'll think about it. Because I was still kind of double-dutching, especially off of that one phrase he said to me, like, fight or get the fuck out. So I was kind of double-dutching, like, like, you don't tell your guys that. Like, if it's an injury, you be a little more, you know, empathetic. You understand what he's going through. And you knew, like, the man showed up to, you know, my brother's, like, funeral. So you know what mental state I'm in right now. And I'm not 100%. And, you know, and it, I'm not there. Right? I'm not there. Like, I'm just going through the motions. So it was, you know, it was very considered. And um, I uh, remember getting home and doing my therapy. And I wasn't able to help teach class the way I was able to teach class. And I wasn't able to do the things I was able to do. And um, I started to realize not feeling wanted. Uh, Jarrell, if you gave me two choices, right? Whatever the case may be, and Jarrell, right? Let's say you say, yo, yo um, you want to go to get something to eat? You want to go hang out with Jarrell? I'm choosing Jarrell. There's, there's nothing you can do to convince me. I'm, I'm choosing Jarrell. What if I told you that I was going out to eat and Jarrell was going to be there? I'll be there with okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I was hanging out with Jarrell, and at the time, he was put in a dilemma too. See, his dilemma, dilemma was he was fighting in the Golden Gloves. And the owner of the gym gave him two options. It's just like he gave me two options. He said, you fight and you train from this gym or you get the fuck out. Then he kicked him out. Borderline drill left mutually, right? But still, why would you give someone that, that option? An ultimatum. Um, Jarrell always liked boxing? Loved. That's what he was into? He wasn't into the mixed martial arts th- side of it? Not really so much like MMA. He loved boxing because we grew up watching kickboxing too, you yeah. know? And, you know, later on, Jarrell fights one of our idols, Mirko Krokop. It's like, you can't get anything, you know, anything better than that, you know? It's like, you know, him fighting Mike Tyson. It's like, oh, shit, I grew up idolizing you. You know, you feel bad beating the fucking guy, you know? <laughs> but it's like, oh, shit, I'm in the same presence. The old guard's got to leave. Yeah, <laughs> right? Pass, <laughs> passing the torch, right? So, um, you know, Jarrell just wanted to better his skill set. At the end of the day, he was still representing, you know, the gym we came from. So uh, I get kicked out. Uh, Drell hadn't left at this point, and I started to take up the offer. Now, Phil Nurse told me, come to the gym. So now I take Jarrell. I said, Jarrell, you know, Phil always wanted me in his gym. Like, let's go. Let's go check it out. He goes, all right, cool, cool, cool. So me and him hop on a train, and we go into the gym, and uh, I was really cool with Phil Nurse's nephew. So, um, uh, yeah, at the time, fuck, I forgot the guy's name, but I was, I was cool with Phil Nurse's nephew. And uh, I was like, yo, man, Phil here? He goes, nah, 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 bro, he not here. I said, do you mind if us, you know, could we, you know, take a look around? Me and Jarrell, he goes, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So we go around the gym. I said, Jarrell, I can make this home. He goes, nah, I don't like this gym for you. I said, why? He goes, nah, it's just not giving me, like, the vibe. Like, no, this is not home. It's a place to train, but this is not home for you. Like, we'll find somewhere else. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So then uh, Jarrell started to become a little more busier with his boxing schedule. So I said, I got to do something. So, I, you know, I joined the MMA gym and uh, Militich Fighting Systems. They're no longer around. Uh, I didn't really learn much there, nor did I really get much there. The only thing I got out of it was I would spar with Ally Quinta, who is now like a UFC contender now. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah dope. Al's a sweetheart. Cool guy, man. Real cool guy. Funny, funny, funny guy. Funny guy. He, he got a lot of jokes, but um, real cool guy. And Militich ends up turning into New York top team. New York top team. Top to team right now. American top team. Yeah, they American became. Top team right now. 
But at that point, it was like, this isn't home either. You know, this this isn't home. So my cousin, Andy, was kind of like, you know, on, on his way out at, at, at the gym that he was at because everybody was getting kicked out and everybody was leaving. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, cool. Like, we could, we could make this happen. And before you know it, like, I get into a car accident. I get into a car accident, and, like, my career is over. Would you break or would you would hurt? Oh, shit. I get into a car accident, and I had, had probably still have, 13 herniated discs. Mm. How many herniated, how many discs are even in your body? I probably have a third herniated. I'm going to sound like a moron. I don't know. I'm going to find out, though. Yeah. So not only that. I mean, it's, it's each spinal column. So how many each spinal discs are in a disc in the spinal cord? 23. 23. Yeah, so almost all of them. Oh, shit. I was fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, man. All caps. But apparently I hit my head. And I didn't necessarily black out. But when I did step out the car, it was a little bit foggy. So um, my rehab for that was fucking hell. You know, my mom would have to help me go to the bathroom, literally wipe my ass, and, you know, get me, you know, get me going. It was, it was rough. It was. Um, and then I had the mental, like, I'm going to fucking fight. I'm going to train. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But my physical was not adding up. Like, two plus two equals four, right? I had two plus X equals four and couldn't figure out what the fuck X was. Like, we know it's two, but I just couldn't get everything going. And, um, it was agreed when we started the gym that we're at Pinpoint. Um, I would start slowly. I would just, you know, maintain the main, uh, you know, the, the front desk and then get back to doing what I was doing, which was teaching, training, the whole shebang. Um, in that process, I'm going through my doctor visits and they're hitting me with reality. They're like, guy, give that fighting shit up. You're not fighting again. You're not fucking doing yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And they also said, give it up because you ain't going to walk normal again either. So I said, Ugh. for me to say, okay, like, I'll budge on the fighting. Um, but to be able to walk normally, act normally, live normally, you can't. Uh-uh. Yeah. So um, I, had, I had a rough, rough, rough going physical therapy. Uh, what, my grandmaster, Bill Pierce, he, was a, he is a licensed uh, massage therapist, so he was helping me as well, too. As much as humanly possible. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah. God bless that man. God bless that man. You want to talk about... So if I ever had to pick five people to have my back in a fight, I only need him. I only need Bill. I mean, Jarrell is obviously going to be one of those five, 100%. What about Jamal? Jamal, 100 percent. Jamal's gonna be like, "What up, baby? Who want to fucking fight? <laughs> you know, like, like who wants this shit? <laughs> you know." But um, you know, he's the type of fucking person that he was a breacher. So if you know what a breacher is, he was a narcotics cop. Oh yeah, he was so, the first one in the room. Oh fuck yeah, yeah, gangster shit, dude. I remember, uh, you know, obviously I'm skipping a lot of shit, but I remember I fucking had a, a seminar with kids with. Kids, bro. Kids. At your gym? At my gym. Kids, some adults, but fucking kids. And my grandmaster's teaching a fucking seminar. Because, yeah, guys, you know, when I was in the, you know, when I was a cop, blah, 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 kicked the fucking door down. (laughs) I'm like, oh, shit, this is not going good. This is not going good. He goes, yeah, and I fucking pull that trigger, and all you see is fucking a head splatter and and the background, the silhouette of a Christmas tree. I'm like, kids what like, the fuck is like, going on? Oh my on? god, you're blowing my mind right now. This is fucking crazy, dude. I was, I was like, wow, this is crazy. But come on, I'm like, yeah, go on, you tell me your fucking story. But I'm like, fuck, this kid, you can't tell him that shit. Yeah, you can't tell him that shit. But you know, he he was, you know, he was kind of telling, you know, his his story. But um, that's all. That's all I fucking needed was him, Bill, no one else. Let me let me ask you. Going into owning a gym, yeah, was that a big transition for you? Because it's not easy being a business owner. No, it, it it's and, not. And, and getting the logistical side of it, because now you're just not able to just fight, and you're not just trying to 
beat the pads like that. You have to factor in rent and you have to factor in getting members in and teaching. And so it became when I was manning the desk because I can't step on the, I can't step on the mats as of yet. So I learned how to talk to people. I learned that I was once in their shoes, signing up, paying membership, and then I couldn't afford the shit because we weren't, you know, the richest. No, we were poor. But my brother just couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. Two fifty a month, he just couldn't afford it. It's expensive, man. These gyms, these gyms are crazy. And it's it's not to say that it's not worth it in any particular way. Yeah. A lot of these people that go to a specific Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, like this is their gym. Mm -hmm. They're not going to a Bev's. They're not going to a Lifetime on top of it. Yeah. This is their fitness regimen every single week. Mm -hmm. So when that became evident, I said, fuck, am I going to really turn you around and say, don't come back? So I start to still let people come in for training. And I wouldn't let my fucking cousin know that shit. Like, you know, we'll have talks. We'll have heart to hearts. And you hear what these people are fucking going through. You know, I say this to every member who signs up till this day. Like, you're not a number in my system. You're not, hey, double check on number 43, see if he's still in the gym. No, like, you're family. You are family because I understand what you're going through. And if you can't afford this gym, guess what? This is still a home for you because I need to give you an outlet. I need to let you feel you're not alone. Like, we are here. And there's a lot of people within the gym who just can't afford it still to this day. And what am I going to do? Kick you out and say, don't fucking come back? No. Home. This is where you made it. You ain't going nowhere. Like, I got your back. And don't even worry about the fucking money that you couldn't fucking afford. When, if you have it, when you have it, it's cool. If you don't, it's still cool. I ain't looking at you any differently. So I had the opportunity to learn where people are coming from on a different level. So my training, uh, as far as trying to get back on my feet, get back on my feet, get back on my feet. And then one day I sat behind the desk and I was, I was kind of bored. So I'm sitting behind the desk and I turned and I'm watching class. I'm like, that's wrong. You don't do that. Like you don't do that step. You would turn, you would shit them on a 90 and there goes your shot right there. So I, I got up. And I walked over to the guy. His name's Tyrone. Yeah, you know, Tyrone, uh, me and him remember the story. Um, and we talk about it still to this day. And I said, Tyrone, don't do that. Step off here, shoot, you know, step on a 90, right? Cut an angle, and your cross is right there. And then he shows Andy, like, oh, this is what he was saying. You're telling me to do this. He goes, no, don't do that. That's wrong. I'm like, that's fucking wrong. What do you mean? That's right. No, no, that's wrong. So then I said, show me. I told Andy Flowers, show me it's wrong. Like, show me right now. Show me. He goes, no, nah, I don't have to approve myself to you. You're just a fucking secretary. Damn, that's aggressive. Yeah. I said, a fucking secretary? He goes, yeah, why don't you go sit behind the fucking desk and just be a secretary? Yo, Tyrone, what do you call someone that sits behind the desk? A secretary? That's what you are. Go be one. So this is somebody that worked at the gym at the time? No, this is my partner. This is my cousin. <laughs> oh, that's your cousin? Yeah, it's one of my cousins, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, oh, I'm a secretary. I've gotten into tussles with my cousins for way less than that. I said, oh, shit, I'm a fucking secretary today? Okay, cool. And that was game time. My fucking, my, my adrenaline boiled. I said, you know what? It, it's time to fucking, you know, get my shit together. So I started to take my, my, my therapy more serious, started doing everything more serious, and I forced myself to step on the mats and teach and the shit that I would fucking teach he would try to downplay like whatever and then the next week he teaches the same exact fucking lesson word for word step for step stride for stride same lesson and it was correct because he did it did you fight your cousin all the fucking time okay <laughs> I, I, did I fight with him who no? Like, did you beat him up? Like, who whooped who? Oh no, Andy can't beat. He can't beat my ass. He knows that shit from till his day. If he was ever fucking lace up gloves, he can't fucking whoop okay. my ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's all that matters. That's no, but there was there's a huge size difference between him, between me and him. I'm six two. He was like five five five. Huge size difference. So it was like, 
<laughs> Damn, that hurt. You know, <laughs> it's, it's huge size size difference. And he can fight though. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. He can, he can fight. You no, know, like I said, he was one of the, the like the seven that was destined for great things. You know, we were all destined to eventually fight on TV. And I, out of the seven, I think I am the only one who has not fought on TV. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the only one because my career got cut short. Is that ever going to change? Or are you done? I wanted to fight again. I wanted to fight again. But the realism behind it, I don't want to take that shot. I don't want to. Smart. I grew up with no father. I never had a complete family system of mother and father. I want to be able to remember and have conversations and not to say, what's your name again? I don't want to have that to be a factor because I actually suffer from post-concussion syndrome. Um, As do probably most fighters. Oh, yeah, but they neglect it. Yeah. They neglect it. And, uh, Same thing with um, football players. NFL players. Yeah, they neglect it and neglect it and neglect it. Like sometimes you can catch me slurring my words, but you really have to pay attention to it. Like, uh, what the fuck did he say? I get that a lot. Like, oh, what did he say? What did you just say? I'll repeat it slower. But I speak. I try to speak fast so I can hide it because I don't like good so far for an hour and a half. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And to truly like focus hard on something, like I forget stuff, you know, as you know, most oh, people dude. do. There are times where I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I'm starting to, th- I'm starting to slip mentally. I'm like, I'm starting to slip, but it's really not that I'm forget forgetting things. It's just yeah. I have so many things going on at one time. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to remember. Like this person wanted this on their project. This person wanted this on this project. I'm talking to this girl. Like you got to text her. Like, it's, it, there's just so much shit. And then mom, and then taking care of the dog, and this and that. So yeah. like my brain just kind of goes, yeah, just, like f- spreads all the way the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I completely understand you on that one. Um, now try thinking like that, right? With a concussion. With post symptoms. Post a concussion. Symptoms. So yeah, you got to worry about client, but what the fuck did I have to do for him again? And yeah, you got to do this for that one. Like, what the fuck? And then you start to confuse this person for that person. I didn't want to. I I saw the lane. So my brother was trying to itch, you know, like yo, come on, come on, go fight again, like go fight again, like go fight again. Mm. And I would tell him like. I don't know if I could. Like, I don't know if I could. Like, I'm really worried. Like, I'm really, really worried. We'll do a fucking hype video in your gym. Yeah. Jamal, you hit you hit the pants <laughs> with Jamal. We'll do that. It'll be like you did a cool fight. Well, here's the thing, though. I actually did train to come back. And I got in some crazy sick shape. Um, but there's a difference between training to come back and training to... Like actually fight, you know what I'm saying? Like not that no, you no, I was not, going to fight, but that's what I'm saying. Not that you thought that you weren't weren't going to at yeah, some point, yeah, because you obviously thought you were going to fight. But there's a difference between just training like you were fighting, yes, and then just dropping out, which is the safer method to begin with, yes. But you have that mindset and that physicality that you were about to, like if, yeah, if I want to spar, I can. Should I spar? No. If I want to spar and drill, I can. Do I want to? No. And I recommend a lot of people listening to your body. Like, you need to listen. Because once this goes, that's it. Yeah. That's it. There's no nothing that they could do. They, you know, medicine is not at the point where they could, you know, regenerate your brain. They say they could do it, but I don't think they're at the point where they could, you no. know. No, they're not at that point yet. It's, it, it's um the mind is everything. Mm-hmm. The mind is everything, and... Once once you start to slip into f- either feeling bad for yourself mm-hmm. or do that anymore, I can't do this, yeah. the body follows, like you're saying. A hundred percent, you know, and uh, I was training with Omar. You know Omar. Oski Eats. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, man. Omar's going to come back on <laughs> the podcast. I love Omar. <laughs> I love Omar. Omar's uh, uh, boat loads of fun, man. I call him Leansky. A lean, he, lean Leansky? Leansky, now that he's all fucking chiseled up. Well, he was never like that. Yeah, he I know. Was, he was heavy. He, he was, came on the podcast. He came on Voice and Rizzles like two years ago. Yeah, he was a big boy. Now, I actually got Omar when he was with his uncle, and his uncle was teaching him some bullshit. <laughs> some bullshit. I told Omar I wouldn't embarrass him too much. But uh, uh, yeah, 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 some bullshit. I, we'll, I, do, we'll do a we'll do a, uh, an episode with everybody here one day. Oh, my God. That'll be yeah, straight yeah, we'll jokes. We'll do an episode with everybody. Straight fucking yeah. jokes. Um. But uh, no, I, I, I had to uh, train with him because we we're missing a lot of key pieces. So as I was training with Omar, 
I said, fuck, I could do this again. Like I said, I could do this again. Omar's a really, really, really good fighter. Um, but when it came down to performing in front of the lights, it gets to some people. So I think I put him on too big of a show and not build him up the right way. So I kind of take some responsibility for him. You know, I had him fight on Madison Square Garden twice. And, you know, it was the lights. The lights got to him, you know, physically, mentally. You get to me too. Yeah, mentally ready to go. Fucking guy busts his ass, man. That fucking kid can work. Like, I see work ethic in a lot of people. That fucking kid had, he had it. He had it. But this wasn't there. And it's okay, you know. I'm very proud of him for what he's done and where he is right now. So um, that would never, like, by mind, you know, those two experiences that he had. He fell short, but, you know, he could get back on, on a horse and, and, and get it going again. I keep trying to pull him back in. He's good. Yeah, he's good people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get a session with everybody. I've been boxing with Jamal. Really? Yeah, I've been boxing with Jamal. Okay. That's been... Uh, that's been an adventure. Yeah, it's been an adventure. It's. I it's like dope. boxing with Jamal. He's he's a good coach. He's mm-hmm. good with keeping me on my toes and and and, and teaching me the fundamentals and the basis of what I need to do. And you know, my issue is I gotta get my stamina up. Yeah, that's everybody. It dude, it's tough, man. It, it's tough. He he's got me throwing like fifty to hundred punches in like one 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 just like move, and then we're 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 going to jabs, and then we're going to crosses, and then jab crosses, and then burnouts at the end. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's tough. And then I always wind up, I always wind up hitting the pads with him the day after I did chest. It always, uh, and always he has is me, like and that. he has me do walk out, bear crawl, push ups to warm yeah. up. I'm like, dude, come, oh my god. Yeah. But it's a good time. I I like fighting. I like the sport of it and the art of it. I, I like training in it. I'm not. I don't like fighting. Like that's I don't like to re- fight. That's what reeled me back in because while I'm training with Omar, it's doing this to me. Yeah, it's doing you just, this to it me. makes you feel a certain way and, and it gets I'm, the hooks in. Oh yeah. And fuck, you know, my brother wanted me to get back into it. Is this, you know, is this the world saying, "Come on, come"? You know, I'm <laughs> seeing, I'm seeing the Dave Chappelle, Rick James, you know, doing yeah. this to me. <laughs> I'm like, I guess it's time. <laughs> so, how do, how do you feel now? Generally, so now, um, I'm I'm comfortable with my decision. Now, I'm comfortable with my decision to but, not fight. Yeah, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with it. Um, so I was actually supposed to fight in Dubai. Uh, the guy that I was with, uh, Jelani, he actually was getting me a fight to fight across seas. So I said, okay, cool. Like, everything's lining up. I guess I'm supposed to fight. But we couldn't agree on one thing and one thing only. Drug test. The drug test was refused. You didn't want to take it or he didn't want to take he it? He didn't want to take it. Interesting. Yeah. So I said, fuck. So then maybe this is not what I'm supposed to I do. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Like, what, what do you got to hide, bro? Yeah, so then I said, you know what? I'd be asking for intermittent tests during training and then before the fight and after. That's what they do, right? After that's that's what they do. Yeah. And I said, you know what? The ship's sailing. Bye. And that was basically it for my fighting career. Um, can I, if I strongly choose to, can. Do I? No. I don't want to. Good for you, man. Yeah, I, I, I now live through my guys. Like, you know, I lived through my students. You know, I lived through, you know, Jarrell, you know, and his all his accomplishments. I'm fucking super proud of where he's going, you know. He's had his fair share of battles. And to overcome them, he, ha- he has a really, really, really good story. We'll man. get him on. I'm going to get him on. Yeah. I'll get him on once he's up here You again. know, I was supposed to be here weeks ago. Yes. So, I had COVID. Like I told you. My man got the vid. I had that shit. Welcome man. to the club. And I was fucking... I'm a two-timer. Oh, you really? <laughs> yeah. Two-timer. Shit. Two-timer. Both both times, barely anything. You know, and, uh, you know, my brother, he's diabetic. So I was so scared. And you get nervous, yeah. Uh, yeah. I get it. We, we all live together, so uh, I got him sick. So now, here comes Jarrell. Jarrell calls me, and I send him a voicemail. He calls me again. I send him a voicemail. So he sends him, pick up the fucking phone. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I'm dying. Like I'm legit. Did, did it hit you bad? Bad. Oh, she would have hit me up, man. I could have sent you to my Indian cat. I wish. I, I wish. I think I told you about him. You know, I my what? man Kumar. My man I Kumar read it. Been healing everybody. I read it. You know what I did? You knocked out. Yeah, that's what happens. And then right. you just don't want to check your phone again, or you're on and off, and you're trying to keep yourself, your mind occupied. No, I get it. Yeah, my my man Kumar, helping everybody out. He's been giving holistic uh, approaches to everything. That's the that's the biggest thing when you deal with COVID and something like this. You have to. Pre-treatment, you have to, yeah, you have to get it out of your system as quickly as possible before it festers. And once it festers, that's your issues, you know. And uh, I had not a doctor. I don't, I, you know, I, but I, I've seen a lot of people 
recover and be fine from it mm -hmm. because they did pre-treatment yeah. instead of going to a doctor going, oh, you have COVID. Come back in two weeks if you're bad. Yeah. You're worse. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. When in history has anybody ever said that to you yeah. before? Even with the flu, they've always said, take this, 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 and you'll be fine. Uh -huh. Do this, 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 and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you got to give me a promise, but you should be practicing what you preach and helping people before they are at a point of no return. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was fucked. Yeah. And I, I said, I said to God, I said, God, if you want me, I'm yours. But. You know, I feel like I still have so much more left to do. Hell yeah, man. So, Jarrell, that's when Jarrell hit me, you know, hit me up. So, I'm like, oh, this must be your signal. So, he keep hitting me up, hit me up. Finally, pick, pick up the phone. I said, yo, I got COVID. He goes, I, he goes, I had a feeling something was wrong with you. Like, he could feel that shit, you know? And I think he was heading to the city. And he legitly turns the fuck around and goes and buys a whole bunch of shit for me and pulls up at my house. And he had, like, bags full of shit. He goes, take this, take that, take this, take that, take this, take that. And I'm like, dude, I have COVID. He goes, I don't give a fuck. You're my yeah, family. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Like, that's all that matters. Like, you know you're good. And I say, you know what? Yeah. Once you're all set, like, oh, I'm, I'm good. So I'm like, fuck. Like, he went all the way out of his way to buy all that shit for me. And then went right back on his route. That's family, <laughs> man. That's family. Yo, but, I mean. But it's 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 crazy how he did, that. and it seems like that's what you guys preach over at your gym too. It seems family. like a very big family oriented family. Everyone's together, a cohesive, great vibe family, you know. And it's communication too, you know. I I I, I always talk to my members. I'm like, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, how was work? Simple. How was work? How was your day? You know, before I hit pads. Oh, stressful? Yeah. Well, what was so stressful about it? All right. Can you focus? Well, why can't you focus? All right, cool. You're at this point. Now let's start to work. You know, it's not, oh, 30 goes on. Come on, let's fucking go. You know, you're not a number. Yeah. And that's why people, they, they stay around and they stick around because they love the atmosphere that we're creating in the gym. It's really like, it's, it's truly a family, man. It really is. And it, it's tough because, you know, when I watch like competitor gyms and, you know, they're like, you know, fighting UFC and doing this. I'm like, we'll get there. We'll get there. Little by little, man. Little by little. Little by little. You know, Joe wins the world title. Uh, he was supposed to. He was supposed to. That That's, yeah. I'm going to speak into the, uh, existence. He is the heavyweight champ. Not the next heavyweight champ. He is the heavyweight champ. It's bound to happen. When's the next one? TB, to be determined. This year or next year? It's gonna happen this year. Cool. That's what Jay. I think that's what Jay said to me. It's gonna happen this yeah. year. I actually called him before I uh, I came in here. Yeah. 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 I'll I'll make sure I'll make sure that I'm there. I'll I'll, do, I'll grab some pictures of, of Jarrell when I'm out there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go do some cool shit. He got no choice. I'm I'm saying it right now. He has no choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he has yeah. No it, choice. It'll, it'll be amazing. So now let me ask you. Yes. Um, I think we're gonna wrap. Okay. Because I got an amazing background on you as a human being. Your, okay. Your story, the things you've gone through. Yeah. We're going to definitely have you come back on. Uh -huh. And that's and just gonna, and the tip. Give, that's what I'm saying. And you're going to give me all the stuff about the gym, fight mechanics, stuff like that. I, uh -huh. I want to dive deeper into that stuff. Okay. But I know your boy also is here and he's waiting. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we've been going for like an hour and 40 minutes right For real? Yeah. Yo, time flies when you have fun, man. It flies, man, when, you, when you're just breaking it down oh, and just having shit. a conversation. So let me ask you this. Yes. Please plug the gym. How can people come to your gym to support you, to mm -hmm. come train, learn about fighting, stuff like that? Plug. Um. I mean, you can follow me on uh, Instagram, Pink Rocks. You can follow the gym Instagram, Pinpoint Muay Thai NY. Uh, you can call, text, email, whatever the case may be. But um, you're going to be seeing me a lot more here. So they're going to start to associate me with the gym. And just me being here, they're going to know, oh, shit, Pinpoint, Pinpoint, Pinpoint. So they got, they're going to know. They're going to they're gonna be able to follow us through there. Through, 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 through the uh, you know, amount of uh, uh, times we're going to be here, they're going to be able to follow us. Fuck yeah. I love you. that. Listen, I want to thank you for sharing your story with me. Yeah, man. All the hard shit. It's not easy to open up all the time. No. And uh, especially when you have people that are, you know, random people that you don't know that are going to be listening to the episodes. Yeah. It can be um, a little intimidating at first, but yeah. I think there's also a therapy within it. Yeah, 100%. Because everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. My story is different from your story. But once you start to hear my story and compare it to your story, that's when we start to walk on the same path. And nobody has it easy. No. Like, uh, yeah, people no. look at, oh, well, this rich guy, this guy loaded. It's like, yeah, but his path may have not have been crystal cut. 
Mm-mm. Maybe he, yeah, okay, that kid's been loaded by his parents and they gave him everything since he was a child. Mm-hmm. But that's his own struggle and yeah. his own demons that he's battling. He'll he'll experience them later on. Exactly. Nobody has an easy life. Yeah. Like, everyone has to struggle in some way. A hundred percent. Whether that's in the beginning and then it's clean sailings. Whether it's in the it, whether it's hard, it's it's easy in the beginning and then it turns to shit. Like there's always something that people have to go through trials to test you and make you evolve as a human being. There's always a rock bottom and an oh fuck moment. Yeah. A hundred percent. Everybody has to experience that. And that's what really makes and defines who you are as an individual. Can you get up from this oh fuck moment? Can you? Facts, bro. Yeah. I think you I think you've proven, especially in what you've gone through and, and your 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 dialogue today that you definitely have gotten back up. Oh yeah. Oh, many yeah. times. Oh yeah. Well this is one of many <laughs> on go. this podcast. One let's of go. many. Let's so go, bro. <laughs> let's get it going. Once again, I appreciate you. Thank you. Everybody, episode 21, my man. You already heard it here first. Let's get it. Yeah. Peace.